How you doing? This is Pastor Wes uh, on the Wine of Life podcast. What we're going to do tonight is talk about um, alienation and something that uh, Jordan Peterson said recently on a Joe Rogan podcast about the Bible. I think he, um, a lot of people have focused on certain things about it, but I think that uh, there's, a, there's a certain part that I want to focus on more. And so we're going to talk about what he says about the Bible, and then we're going to talk about alienation from said Bible, um, the book as it stands. So what we're going to do is I'm going to go ahead and play you this clip, and then uh, we're going to have a conversation about it. So here we go. The Joe Rogan experience. If categories dis- 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 dissolve, especially fundamental ones, the culture is dissolving because the culture is a structure of category. Mm-hmm. That's what it is. Right. So, and in fact, culture is a stra- culture is a structure of category that we all share. So we see things the same way. Well, that's why we can talk. I mean, not exactly the same way because then we'd have nothing to talk about. But roughly speaking, we have a bedrock of agreement. Uh, that's the Bible, by the way. So I just walked through the Museum of the Bible in Washington. That was very cool. It's a very cool museum. So the structure, that's what the Bible Yeah, that's what provides. I figured out. I've been, I just figured this out this week. So it was a cool, it was a cool thing to walk through because it's it's chronological. They have one floor which is the history of the Bible. Mm. But it's not exactly that. It's really what it is is the history of the book. Now, in many ways, the first book was the Bible. I mean, literally, because at one point there was only one book. Like as far as our Western culture is concerned, there was one book, and for a while, literally, there was only one book. And that book was the Bible. And then before it was the Bible, it was, a, you know, it was scrolls and it was writings on papyrus. And, but it was, we were starting to aggregate written text together. And it went through all sorts of technological transformations. And then it became books that everybody could buy, the book everybody could buy. And the first one of those was the Bible. And then it became all sorts of books that everybody could buy. But all those books, in some sense, emerged out of that underlying book. And that book itself, the Bible isn't a book, it's a library. It's a collection of books. And so what I figured out was partly because I was talking to my brother-in-law, Jim Keller, who's the world's greatest chip designer and has now designed a chip that's as powerful as the human brain, which is optimized for artificial intelligence learning, by the way. And so I talked to him about that. He said, you heard of the internet? I said, yeah, Jim, I've heard of the internet. He said, this is way more revolutionary than that. So in any case, we were talking about meaning in text because we were talking about translation and the problem of understanding text. And Jim said, the meaning of words is coded in the relationship of the words to one another. And the postmodernists make that case that all meaning is derived from the relationship between words. That's wrong because, well, what about rage? That's not words. And what about moving your hand? That's not words. So it's wrong, mm-hmm. but, but part of it's right because the meaning we derive from the verbal domain is encoded in the relationship between words. So, so now then you think, well, let's think about the relationship between words. Well, some words are dependent on other words. Some ideas are dependent on other ideas. The more ideas are dependent on a given idea, the more fundamental that idea is. By de- that's a definition of fundamental. So now imagine you have an aggregation of texts in a civilization you say, which are the fundamental texts? And the answer is, the texts upon which most other texts depend. And so you'd put Shakespeare way in there in English because so many texts are dependent on Shakespeare's literary revelations. And Milton would be in that category and Dante would be in that category, at least in translation. Fundamental authors, part of the Western canon, not because of the arbitrary dictates of power, but because those texts influenced more other texts. And then you think about that as a hierarchy, okay, with the Bible at its base, which is certainly the case. Now imagine that's the entire corpus of, li- of linguistic production, all things considered. Now, how do you understand that? Like, literally, how do you understand that? The answer is you sample it by reading and listening to stories and listening to people talk. You sample that whole domain you build a low resolution representation of that in your inside you and then you listen and see through that 
And so it isn't that the Bible is true. It's that the Bible is the precondition for the manifestation of truth, which makes it way more true than just true. It's a whole different kind of true. And I think this is, I think this is not only literally the case, factually, I think it can't be any other way. It's the only way we can solve the problem of perception. All right. Now, he said a lot there. Um, a lot of people have been kind of excited about what he was saying, trying to claim that he was saying that, that, that the Bible is the, the, you know, the way that we can perceive truth. What he was doing was he was discussing the fact that in Western society, the foundation or the lens by which we have been able to see everything else has been through the Bible. Now, I know some um, people who are um, sort of scientists, enlightenment folks and all that, modernists will disagree with that. Uh, but I tend to agree with them on that. I think that um, I think the modernity is a product of the, the Protestant Reformation, for one, but just Christendom in general in the West. So I tend to agree with him with regards to that. Um, now, but he was not saying that Christianity in and of itself is true, or that the Bible is in and of itself true. He's not a Christian. But I think there's a, a certain level of insecurity that we have as Christians. And so when we hear somebody in the world speak about these sort of things, um, we start to freak out and, and say, look, this guy said this. You know, we recently did this, strangely, um, Tim Keller did this with uh, Stephen Colbert, which was odd. I thought, you know, Stephen Colbert is now some sort of witness or something. Uh, you know, we, we ought not be this way um, and hope that someone in the world, whether they're uh, a entertainment person or an intellectual, um, hope that they, that, you know, that they believe like we do or they say whatever we do. Um Jordan Peterson is not a professing Christian or anything like that. But the interesting thing that he said was, is that he said that the the base, the foundation, the lens that we need to use, you know, creating that low resolution thing within ourselves that allow us to see through everything else is the Bible. And that's how we see through everything um, to create our categories for the culture. But before that, he said, the culture is dissolving. And that was, inter that is the interesting part to me. Because as the culture has dissolved, um, the relevance of the church has also dissolved and is falling apart. And we're losing more and more people. More and more people question very basic truths about the church. And that's the question I want to deal with. And I think one of those issues is the fact that we are now alienated from our own book in the first place. Um, because we are alienated from the person who created the book. And one of the, the things about Jordan Peterson is, is he's brought the Bible back into a prominent place within the culture. You know, people like new atheists like Sam Harris have to deal with questions about the Bible now <clears throat> in ways they never had to before. Um, and that's not to knock the apologists, but a lot of people will say more than any other apologist, Jordan Peterson has brought the Bible <clears throat> into a, a, a position that none of the Christian apologists could before. And I've, I've actually heard <laughs> there was one guy, I'm not going to say his name, but he, I was listening to him, and um, a, an apologist pastor who was a bit bitter about that, um, being angry about that, because Peterson's not a Christian, but he has brought the Bible into a place that other ones didn't. So, And that's not to knock people like William Lane Craig you know, Frank Turek, all these other guys, um, because they've also sparred with people like Sam Harris, but they haven't, they haven't gotten across why the Bible is important. <clears throat> and so uh, Peterson's important in that regard, but one of the reasons why I think Peterson and the same with people like John Verveke, who I, I uh, take his, you know, his four Ps, the idea of the, the proposition, the procedural, the participatory, and the pers perspectival, I think those are really, really key. But he's trying to create his own religion, uh, a sort of Neoplatonic religion without a God type of thing. Uh, and he's, what they're trying to do is they're, him and Peterson both are trying to put together spirituality and science and find a way um, to be a bridge for those things that you can have the material world of, of modernity and the Enlightenment and you can also have a world of meaning. 
and that nobody there is no meaning to anything anymore there's a total nihilistic outlook on the world that materialism has brought us and um, what I would say and this is I guess a critique towards towards Peterson and Verbeke and um, and people who are following him I think they're going to lead you down the same road and it's the same road that the church has already been down with with modernity that we have decided to just spout out propositions telling people what to do rather than why they're supposed to do it and this has led people to find the church to be irrelevant to them they don't want to come to church they don't see it as something that's fruitful for their lives <clears throat> and the issue is is that the church isn't offering relationship the whole point of someone like Peterson why he's important is he's he's given the idea that there needs to be an ideal that we strive for an ideal is a big thing for him and he uh, like Carl Jung has decided that Christ is this sort of ideal man not accepting him as as the son of God or anything but that he's an ideal person that we need to try and emulate but where do we get the ideals from and this is the problem I have with with some of Peterson's stuff where do we get the ideals from where you know when we talk about Christ embodying some ideal where did he get that from because he says if you see me you see the father he is the image of the father so he's the image of a person it is the ideal is always a person there is no ideal that doesn't emerge out of the person and so if you don't offer relationship to the person you can't really be striving for the ultimate uh, ideal because the ideal is something that emerges out of the person and what is the spiritual if we're trying to talk about connecting the spiritual and the physical world spirit is the word for breath uh, in the Hebrew that's Ruach and so it's a, the, the holy breath of God through the breath is the way that we transfer our spirit between one another and we manifest our ideas through words and so what God did was in breathing out his word he created everything that's Psalm 33 6 and so how do we who gets to breathe well the person breathes right the the, the, the notion that ideals simply emerge out of material or emer or just are up there in you know in the ether somewhere um, doesn't really hold water because who gets to determine what the ideals are they have to emerge out of the person and for us being made in the image of God it is God who determines what the ideal is he is the ideal so a person is the ideal and a person is a way to reach that ideal so Christ is our way to the Father and so if you're if you're following sort of Peterson or Verveke and these guys are really smart and I think they're really sincere about trying to change our culture and and you know they've recognized it's in a bad place it's sick um, and you started going to church because of it I know a lot of people have said they've started going to church and they've helped people and stuff like that but if you're still seeking after an ideal absent of a person absent of a relationship you're gonna end up in the same empty place that you were before you're gonna end up alienated and that's what our real alienation is it isn't that we don't have motivation to try and reach an ideal it is that we are striving after the wrong thing because we shouldn't be striving after a thing we should be striving after a person and that person is well, Jesus Christ now, obviously I'm a pastor so I'm going to say that but um, that's an issue that the church currently has we've decided to uh, shell out all these all these buzzwords and all these words to people and say do this do that but we never talk about why we're supposed to do it we never talk about um, how we can be transformed by being in a relationship with the God who we claim to believe in uh, we don't offer that to people on a regular basis we tell them come to church and you'll be a good person come to church it'll make you better it'll, it'll help your life in what way can it do that right a lot of people struggle to tell others why they're supposed to come to church and it's supposed to be a transformative experience it's supposed to be something that transforms you not just makes you a better person but ontologically transforms you right 
and maybe that's a little Neoplatonic there, but it's supposed to alter you as as Peter says we are as as someone who has faith as someone who's been saved you're supposed to participate in the divine nature that's second Peter 1 3 and 4 so that's what we're trying to get at and that alienation from our own book right alienation from the one who wrote it from the one who breathed it out has caused us to feel the alienation that's going on in the culture and so we have a foot in both as Christians and it's uh, it's very disorienting, and I think it's leading to a lot of our our issues within the church today. And and people like Peterson have brought up those very good questions about why can't we uh, bring in young people anymore? Why why is why is the church dying off in America? Uh, I think or in North America in general. He's from Canada. Verveki is too, I think. So those are those are big questions. I think alienation is is we being alienated from the person who wrote the book as as and we're getting farther and farther away and so the culture is getting farther and farther away from the book itself as well and so the culture is dissolving and as the culture dissolves we are also dissolving at the same time so that's just some thoughts that I was riffing on when I thought about this a lot of people have taken that that clip in other ways but I kind of focused in on the fact that he said the culture is dissolving and it's dissolving because of alienation from the book. And Christians in particular, we are alienated from our own text. And we have to change that. We have to change that very, very quickly. So if you, if you have any thoughts on that, uh, let me know. Subscribe if you haven't yet. And I'll talk to you next time.